Here's the guts of a Flattron L1718S. Just another uh, dead uh, liquid crystal display type monitor that was given about a year ago because obviously it didn't work. And the re well, at least one of the reasons for that is fairly obvious. This capacitor, which uh, judging by the fact that it's 25 volts, is most likely the one of the main ripple suppression capacitors for the 12 to 14 volt supply for the um, backlight ballasts is bulged. That's probably why it doesn't work. At least one of the reasons there are a couple of other things which might be problems as well, which I will note later on. Overall, it's fairly typical for one of these power supply modules that a lot of these monitors have and have had for some time because this particular one was made in 2006 where it's got the main switching power supply as well as the ballast for the cold cathode fluorescent lamps all in one unit, although nowadays with LED things being more common not having had any of those fail or at least not having had the chance to see inside one I don't know if they might just use a single 5 volt supply this does have um, supply out here which goes off to this other controller board which just has the input signal processing the um, signals uh, out to the liquid crystal display on this uh, flat flex and this uh, ribbon cable which just goes off to the um, circuit board that has um, the idiot light well actually that has another thing on it which there's a separate daughter board that just has the um, a status LED and a PCB on the side of the monitor which just has uh, the five control buttons so all in all, that's just going to be probably just a standard uh, VGA to, um, I don't know if this is, might be multiple, yes, probably multiple low potential differential signal drivers for the um, LCD panel might lift that, see if there's anything interesting on it, probably not, but anyways, um, there's that dead one, these are all uh, Suscon brand caps except for the uh, main fly cap which is a, um, Samson, again, not really great stuff, but then again, because we're electronics, you wouldn't really expect anything good in this. Um, typical power supply input stage, um, NTC for inrush current limiting, a um, safety Y cap, input fuse, ground, um, cap that forms uh, the, that's just for conductive, um, Shorting any conductive uh, or any conducted uh, noise that gets past this um, oh uh, this um, choke, just a typical LCL filter type thing. Mains rectifier, main cap, as mentioned before, a TOP two four five YN. That's just one of these single chip uh, switching supply drivers in a it's a pentawatt 7 package or a TO220 uh, slash 7 fairly similar except it's only got six pins the uh, pin 6 is actually missing and you can see it's looking out auto focus see it only goes from 1 to 6 on the board various other passives for just um, probably things like op operating frequency for the internal, I think it's usually an RC oscillator that these things will work at. Opto for um, output regulation, various other associated passives, um, chokes, and extra ca capacitors for the um, power supply output filtering, and two uh, dual, most likely shot key rectifiers. Uh, that one can't easily read what it says, but it's just as dual shot key and this one which is a MOSPEC URF 1020C made but it doesn't say anything else but it's got the dual diode symbol on it and then there's uh, these two devices which are dual uh, almost certainly dual um, in channel MOSFETs in DIL 8 packages which is somewhat unusual um, 
all their pins connect to this device which has no recognizable part number on it. Also got a fairly interesting font for these things, but there you can kind of see it. But that's probably going to be something like a TL-494 knockoff type device. Or an SG-3524, some kind of uh, simple switcher controller uh, just for driving the backlight um, and uh, ballasts. And there's a burn mark right there. Don't know what exactly that might be due to. Might just be the board got bit that or a bit of that board got overheated during the rework or something, judging by the extra flux sponge there. And then there's this thing with or this burn mark, which is right by this diode. So I don't know if that diode might be dead. In which case, it might be a more advanced thing than just the um, cap going. So yeah, but uh. Probably I'll try and replace just that capacitor. I'll maybe leave a bit of extra lead on it so that I can salvage it if it turns out that that capacitor isn't the only thing. But yeah. Basically just a fairly typical cheap monitor, although pr pretty hard to get into. There was, um, as with a lot of these things, the frame is snapped together. And then there were some extra screws. These are the other end of those. But there were some screws hidden under the mounting bracket, so I had to dismantle the whole mounting bracket assembly. And then this is all just one series or assembly of various bits of sheet metal that were actually riveted together, so I had to dismantle it on the sides. And um, yeah, and there's just that bit of uh, remains of foil tape, which was right by the. Um, flat flex connector for, or the flat flex cable connector for the um, signals out to the panel, so that's probably just uh, extra ground strapping, which again suggests that it's something like low potential differential signal that would be the, um, just to uh, reduce the uh, impedance of the uh, ground path, so. The only real interesting thing is the um, package of, uh, or the type of device that they use, because um, other ones I've seen used um, something like, uh, I forget what they're called, but they're uh, something like a TO252 type uh, surface mount thing. I've also seen um, TO220 type things, but it's the first time I've ever seen uh, these dual dill things. So, yeah. Another thing. And here's the Flatron monitor sort of fixed, although the signal's really noisy, but I think that's just because I had to diddly bog a piece of um, foil tape um, for the um, some of the ground strapping, so I'll see about fixing that, but it works. I'm just using my uh, oscilloscope as a um, herpaderp um, VGA uh, video source just to test this. Just soldered a couple of wires onto both of these shields and just tied them together with all the extra bits just pressing against the metal. That'll hopefully um, be a sufficient replacement for the piece of um, foil sticky tape that was there originally. Much cleaner. So yeah. I have an auxiliary monitor for use with my scope. Yeah. Oh, another one, but I've got usually whatever ones I can take away from a piece of equipment that's in use. So this means I now have a uh, scope monitor. A little green idiot light, although it's one of these. Um, it's sufficiently old that this doesn't use something like blue LEDs. It's just a standard greenish, orangish, red uh, bicolor LED. But then again, this thing is eight years old, and that really didn't, and the blue LEDs for stuff didn't really take off until, for, until a couple of years after that. So, yeah. Angle of view is crap on this thing versus, uh, the scope is, uh, clear even from here, but then again, that's, uh, 2013 LCD, 2006 LCD, but right in front of it's 
perfectly viewable. Which is pretty much what this is going to be for. Anyways.